So Matthew, 1979, the North Heights Church of Christ pretty much began. That's kind of the beginning year of it. It was about February or so when they moved into this church building. And I've been reading. I asked Margaret to give me some history. So she printed off some stuff for me. I've been reading about like past elders and past uh, preachers and youth ministers and everything. And there is a great heritage here at North Heights. And it's really neat to go back and see that because uh, this, what we enjoy here as the family of God, uh, it didn't just happen, you know. Uh, there, there's a lot, there was a lot of foresight, there was a lot of planning involved, a lot of vision that some good men of God had. Um, I was reading uh, Ralph Wallace and Paul Garner were th uh, the first two uh, elders uh, here at this church. And, and the idea of saying, hey, let's take this land uh, that was donated by uh, T.W. Cooper to build this church building, uh, move the school up here, educate people, uh, that takes a lot of vision yeah. and uh, a lot of risk involved and uh, a lot of ambition. And, you know, I'm sure that there were people probably that maybe s stepped back from it, crossed their arms and said, I can't believe they're doing that. Right. Uh, but those men uh, and those women trusted in God uh, to do what they felt was right to further the kingdom of God here in Batesville and in this area of Arkansas and really all over the world because now we look back 40 years later and see the impact yeah. that they've made. Matter of fact, this week I got a message from a man named Bob Wallace. He said, Alex, you don't know me. He says, but I have a history at uh, North Heights and it's, it's Ralph Wallace's son, Bob Wallace. He attends uh, one of the Church of Christ in Conway and uh, he's been there 20 years and he just went on and on in this message uh, about how much he loves North Heights and was asking about some of the things we're, we're doing online and some of the things that we've, we've done so in social media. And he just, he loves this church. So it's just amazing to see the impact that this church has on people. And even recently, you know, with uh, things that go on in our own church family, personal things that go on in our own church family where some of us are hurting uh, I've heard people talk about how this church family is not like any other church family uh, because they pull together, they take care of each other. Well, that's because they have a great heritage mm -hmm. uh, and, and they have a past uh, that is um, one that should be commended. But what's so interesting about that is that heritage, you know, it didn't start just 40 years ago. When we think about the church of Christ, yeah, we talk about the local church, but we, we also have to think about the universal, global church, the church for, for all of time. Right. And that is, uh, took some planning from, from God. Yeah. And uh, I'm constantly reminded when I think about the plan of God and, and how he uh, orchestrated it all, how he put his hand in this, he started with years and years ago before the church was established. And I think specifically about when he went to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. And he says, hey, I want you to leave this land of Ur that you've known your whole life with all of your family, with all your friends. And I want you to go to a place where I will show you. Now imagine, imagine if someone told you, pack up all of your stuff take all of your belongings, take your whole family, and just go there. Well, I'd be nervous. You don't even know where there is. I don't know where there is. So I'd be nervous. It would take just a lot of faith. Right. That's why Abraham is a man of faith, and we see that all throughout Scripture. But I love that even even with this, um, this message that's there in chapter 12, verse 1 of Genesis, God's message to him about go to go into a place that I'm going to show you it doesn't end there because I see in the next few verses how it it impacts even us here's what it says in verse 2 and 3 God says to Abraham and I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you and I love this one right here and in you all the families of the earth 
will be blessed. So when God says all the families, I don't know, I'm just a simple-minded man. I think about he means all the families. So that tells me that I'm included in that. Uh, and so it's amazing to see all the way from the very beginning, ch uh, 12 chapters into the beginning of the Bible, we have this plan of God of this heritage that now we at the North Heights Church of Christ are a part of where we're receiving this blessing that Abraham was promised. Mm -hmm. That's our heritage. It's not just 40 years ago. We're talking about going back thousands of years ago. And that heritage and that promise to Abraham was fulfilled through this young carpenter preacher man from Galilee, Jesus. Mm -hmm. John writes in John chapter 1, writes what John the Baptist says. He says in verse 29, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's, that's me. Uh, he takes away my sin. I'm a part of that. And so there's this great fulfillment of all the families of the world will be blessed from Abraham. And here's the Lamb of God, the Son of God, who is that fulfillment, who's going to take away the sins of the world. Paul writes a little bit about this in Romans chapter 11. In talking about God's people, he talks about the new Israel and how that God has not rejected his people. You know, yeah, they've sinned. And uh, when they've sinned, God's very displeased and they're a con contrary people. But he's not rejected his people completely because his people is not, they're, they're not just the Jews anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, he talks about the Gentiles being grafted into this olive branch, this olive tree, and how we're we're a part of it uh, together. And when he writes about this, he's not he's not talking about God rejecting his people Israel. He he's talking about God has accepted this now this new Israel, this new tree where there's both Jews and Gentiles. Uh, and so he's grafted in. That's talking about us. We're a part of that. We're a part of that heritage. Now, by the end of the chapter, chapter 11, verse 36, Paul says this. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. And you think, well, wow, that's a lot of neat little uh, phrases there from him through him to him all things in other words it encompasses everything right to him be the glory well how long Paul he says forever forever and when Paul says forever he means forever mm -hmm. that's the glory of God to forever and so Paul is giving us this beautiful glimpse of the glory of God not just in the past, in the history of Israel, and in the history of the Gentiles being uh, brought in. He's not just showing us the glory of God uh, in the present, but he's also talking about the future. When he talks about forever, he's talking about eternity. God be glorified forever. Past, present, and future. And here at North Heights, we've got a great past. 40 years worth of great past. But our heritage goes further back than that. Great eternal blessings, a great eternal heritage behind us. But here we are now in this present. And there are things that we need to remember as well. When we think about our heritage, we've also got to think about things now in our present. Yeah. When you were talking about the specific past of this congregation, I was thinking about how I've been here about a little over six months. You've been here about three years or so, mm -hmm. right? When you put it in the scope of 40 years, we've, yeah. we've barely been here, right? Barely scratched the surface. Exactly. So there's a long history of work that's been done before we ever set foot yeah. at this location. A lot of people put in blood and sweat and tears to, to help this congregation get to the point where it, where it is now. And we look at this congregation now and, you know, we're, we're occasionally we just stop and we're blown away that we get to be a part of what we are here. And I can't help but think, as we look back on 40 years plus going all the way back to Abraham, like you say, but just 40 years here, 
how many people and how many seeds were planted that were watered along the way. Those early, early seeds that were planted at the very beginning with Ralph Wallace and those, and they were watered over the decades and now are starting to bear fruit with, with wonderful, prosperous, a wonderful, prosperous church family that we have now. So we could just stop right now. We could shut our doors. We could close down shop and never meet again here at North Heights. And if we did that, we would still have left an impression on this community, yeah. Batesville, and as you say, the whole world, because we've we've helped people all over the world, um, as God's blessed us to do. If we just stopped right now, people would still remember the North Highest Church of Christ. But I don't want to stop. No. I don't want to end now. No. It's just that shows you how much work has already been done and how, how prosperous we've already been. But I want us to start planting more seeds or to keep planting seeds and knowing that in years to come they'll be watered and they will prosper later but i'm not worried about later right now i want to think about right now i want to think about what can we do to plant the seeds that the future next 40 years in 40 years when we're old and shriveled and gray right. and we're doing a different video right. we can look back on today yeah. but we can't do that if we don't plant seeds today yeah so my message to the church here at north heights would be that we need to remember to keep planting those seeds. That means talking to our friends about Christ and encouraging them to come worship with us here. Talking to our family, because almost all of us have, if not friends, then at least family, someone who's close to us and also close to the congregation that we could invite, that maybe is uh, fallen away from Christ or has never found Christ. Someone is around in our lives. If we look hard enough, we find them. They can either continue being away from Christ or we can plant that seed that maybe could sprout the next generation of faithful Christians here. And then there are just people in our community. There are people who are seeking as much of an imprint that we've left in Batesville. There are still people who don't really know what we're all about here. There are still people who are still looking for something. They're frustrated with where they are or they've never started looking and they just, they're, they're needing Christ. It's our job in part to go bring them Christ. Yeah. Jesus says, let your light shine. Well, we've done a pretty good job, but we can't rest on our laurels. We, mm -hmm. we can't just say we've done enough. Mm -hmm. If we're not growing, we're dying. That's every person and that's every congregation of people. So my message to the church is keep planting. Keep planting seeds for the future uh, and keep talking to people. I would also say that we need to be constantly looking for what can we do new? What else can we try? It may be a, a failure. We may try and say, well, let's not try that again. Yeah. But we'll never know if we don't try. Right. I mean, imagine if we'd never done the Polar Express because it seems so crazy. Right. Right. Or if we never do trunk or treat, or if we never do breakfast with the Easter Bunny, or all these little things that we do for our community, right, that has resulted in people learning more about us, learning about Christ as a result, and becoming Christians as a result of that. Yeah. If we don't try those things, how much good can we possibly do right. just meeting two hours a week? Right. You know? So I want us to be constantly looking and reevaluating what works, what doesn't work. There are no sacred cows mm -mm. other than the Bible. Right. There's no sacred cows. All these ideas and things that we have need to be constantly examined. What can we try? What can we do? Also, that means individual Christians. We need to look at ourselves. What more can I do? How can I personally grow? We have those involvement forms, right? Yeah. Where can I find my role in the kingdom of Christ to serve it here in Batesville? You may be really good at leading in prayer, and you may have never tried to lead a song. I remember when I was in preaching school, um, it was we had the students on rotation to lead songs in chapel, and my time came up like two weeks after I got there. I'd never yeah. led a song in my life. <laughs> I'd only been a Christian for three years. And so I went to the instructor, and I said, hey, I don't think I can lead a song. And he said, I know you can't lead a song, but you're still going to do it. And I did, and I did, and I did, and now I can halfway get through doing that. Well, you never know what you can do until you try. So I'm going to encourage our members, as we start planting those seeds for the future, plant seeds in yourself that can be watered and sprout to make a more prosperous Christian. That's the kind of person David writes about in Psalm 1. You yeah. know, you're a tree planted. Well, how am I a tree? A seed was planted that sprouted. So plant those seeds in here. What can I personally do to help this congregation moving forward in the present to the future? Yeah. And then finally, my last message to the church here would be to keep on trusting Keep on trusting in God. He directs our steps from heaven. Keep on trusting in our shepherds who yeah. guide us here on earth and then trusting each other. Because yeah. I am 100% committed to this church doubling in size. Yeah. Aren't Me, you? I, absolutely. I want this church to be 100% committed. And then when we reach that goal, if it's in one year or 40 years and we're double, I'm going to be 100% committed to double again. Exactly. Right? If you don't set those goals, you'll never even start to reach those goals. Right. So shoot for the moon. So I want us to trust God. I want us to trust our elders. I want us to trust, trust each other. 
You have skills I don't have. I trust you with your skills. I have skills you don't have. Trust me. Sean has skills that neither of us have. We need to trust him and trust our elders and trust each other as a family in Christ. Look at the seeds that were planted that has now sprouted a wonderful church family here 40 years later. We need to keep planting seeds or we'll be a dead tree in 40 years. So I want us to just be motivating each other and be positive. We've had great success over the past 40 years, but this is not a retirement party. This is just a quick little good job team as we keep pressing forward, talking about the future. Speaking of the future, tell me what the future holds. Well, that's the thing. What's neat about the future is I don't really know what the future holds. But I know, just like the song says, who holds the future. And when we know who holds the future, it reminds us that we need to trust in God. We devote ourselves to His will. And when we devote ourselves to His will, that's where we find our most successful moments Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll have failures and we have to accept those things but we learn from those things and we say you know what i'm going to trust god no matter what to get us through these things and that's where we find great success there's great future uh, ahead of us at north heights church of christ and we just need to remember that the future for us is bright it is new and really if anything what we need to be about is seeking to glorify god Mm -hmm. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about shepherds. It's not about deacons. It's not about Bible class teachers or who makes the best pie or casserole. I don't care. It's not about that. But what it is about is seeking to glorify God. And when we as a church decide that our future is to seek and glorify God, there are no limitations to what we can do. Don't limit God. On what he can accomplish in us. If we're seeking to glorify him. Man he's going to use us. In in ways that we can't even measure. At this time. And you know I, for me. I, I have to go back. To what Paul says. In Romans chapter 11. We read verse 36 earlier. But let's go ahead a few verses ahead. He says verse 33. Oh, the depth and the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments. How unfathomable are his ways. See, that's the future. I don't understand the future. I I can't really fathom the future. But God knows those things. His wisdom and his knowledge is there. That's where I can put my trust. He goes on to say, Paul does. He says, for who has known the mind of the Lord? Mm. What does God have in store for us? I don't know. But I know that if we seek to glorify Him, He has great things ahead of us. He, he goes on to say, who's going to become His counselor? Well, we don't counsel God. We're not in charge of, of everything. But when we're seeking His will and seeking to glorify Him, He's going to be in control of it. It says, who has given Him uh, that He might be uh, paid back uh, again? And then again, we've read this already. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. That's our past. That's our present. That's our future. Yeah. God's in control. We glorify him. So really, the challenge for me in my own personal life and to you and to our listeners is to look to see how we can remember our heritage, mm-hmm. remember where we came from, not just 40 years ago, right. but thousands of years ago. And how that uh, that heritage has established our present mm-hmm. right now, and how we're planting seeds within ourselves and planting seeds in others, and how we're going to take that opportunity to further the kingdom of God by seeking His glory. Right. That's the forever that God has in store for us: His past, His present, and His future. He's in control of it all. Wow, that that is awesome. Yeah, we've got a great future ahead of us. Because we've got a wonderful present and we've got a heritage that we can rely upon. Absolutely.